If I made cottage pie, would I have gotten a higher score? Yeah, I probably would have gotten a 10. Right here, we have carrot, celery, and onion. I diced all three of them up. There's like two large carrots, three celery ribs, and one large onion, about one and a half cups of each. We have beef stock that's gonna go in for our broth mixture. We have Guinness, we have Worcestershire sauce. Those are three really good flavoring agents. Shepherd's pie, it's lamb, right? So I have two pounds of ground lamb. Peas are also one of the vegetables that goes in there. Some people will use corn as well. So, you know, you could do that if you like. The herbs are thyme and rosemary. I have a tablespoon of each. We have five cloves of garlic that are minced. I have three ounces of tomato paste and a quarter cup of flour. So those are like the thickening ag agents. You can use a little bit more if you like. These eggs actually are for over here. So these ingredients are for our mashed potatoes. These are just russet potatoes. Went more like four pounds. You're better off making more potatoes than you need because if you run out when you're piping it on top, it's just, it's always good to have more mashed potatoes, I think. And this is like your perfect opportunity to do that. So it actually looks like three quarter cup. Um, three quarter cup of heavy cream. We wanna make these mashed potatoes kind of like on the thicker side, like kind of so you can like get some peaks in them. Uh, one stick of butter for our potatoes. Three egg yolks that's gonna go in after we make our potatoes and season them up well. And then I have one and a quarter cups of grated Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. This is a good way to make the mashed potatoes. The cheddar cheese would be great too. That's another thing to put on it. So guys, I'm just gonna put my uh, potatoes in a pot of cold water, just fill it up above like that. Bring it up to a boil. You could knock it down a little bit to like, you know, kind of like three quarters of the way high and just cook them until they are fork tender. That's gonna take around 25 to 35 minutes roughly. I have my monster pan, but you don't have to use a pan this big. You could also use a Dutch oven. You just need something that will accommodate your two pounds of lamb, all your vegetables, and all your liquid. Okay, let's heat this up to about medium heat, maybe a tiny bit more. So with stainless, you wanna heat, let your pan heat up for about three minutes before you put down your oil, fat, or anything like that. When I did it on the site, I think I used a nonstick. I can't remember. Um, I've made this recipe like literally a hundred times in my life, shepherd's pie, and I do it a little different each time. Since we're doing stainless, I'll just put a touch of oil down here, but you really don't need it. Lamb has so much fat anyway. And I'm just gonna try to like, press it around right now just to get it one side brown and then we'll flip it and then we'll break it up. All right, it's been like three minutes. You can uh, like try to break it up a little bit and then flip it over like a pancake. I lost my spatula, I don't know where, where it is. And then try to do it away from you. Yeah, I'll turn it up a little bit. I wanna show you a tool that I got from a fan. Thank you, Nadia. I really, this thing is amazing. It's called a meat masher. You know, people would always tell me to get this in other videos and I'd be like, ah, I don't want another tool. This tool is really, really good. It will, uh, it's got some heft to it and it will really break up the meat. Make sure you don't have your really good flannel on today. You could knock the heat down a little bit and then get your vegetables in. And you can see how you need a pretty big pan here or a large Dutch oven to, uh, accommodate everything. It's funny, the nonstick I used, um, you'll see the photos on the website. I'll tell you, that, that got the meat a little browner than this thing. Shoulda, shoulda had the heat a little higher here. Tara, should I start, should I redo the whole video? Yeah, I'll go out to the store right now <laughs> and pick up some more. Hey listen, if you ever wanna make YouTube videos, guys, I'll give you a little uh, tip. Have some backup ingredients. That's why no, none of these YouTubers, guys, none of them do lives. They don't do lives because it's hard. So what do I mean by that? It means I'm gonna do live for you guys eventually. And if I screw up, I screw up, you know, and I'm sure I will. We're used to it. Yes, you are. <laughs> okay. Let these vegetables soften up for a few minutes, then get your oven set to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and set one rack to the middle level and one rack to the upper level. That's looking good. Um, two more minutes though. We used to make so much shepherd's pie. Well, not we, I used to make so much shepherd's pie. We would have this St. Patrick's Day uh, feast every year. When was the last time we did one? Probably when we lived in Minnesota, right? No, no, no we, we did, did one we since did. we came back. It's kind of stopped with um, quarantine. All right, so this is good now. Vegetables are soft enough. We can put our garlic in. We're just gonna cook the garlic until it's fragrant. 
which is just a couple minutes. Everything's sticking to the bottom nicely, forming a nice word, four letter word. All right, just a minute for that garlic. Ah, oh, smells, everything smells so good already. Delicious. And then we're gonna put our tomato paste in. I have three ounces of tomato paste, which is exactly a half of a US can of tomato paste. Tomato paste is always sold in six ounce increments in America, unless you go to a restaurant supply store and buy like a 96 ounce can of it, which would be probably not a good move for if you're cooking in your house, because what are you gonna do with all that, you know? So I love buying them in the six ounce cans. I actually don't like the tubes. The tubes I find are just not enough. Okay, so if it starts to burn it all here, which it is, I'm just gonna pull it off and I'm gonna put a tiny bit of water in, okay? Just to prevent the burning from happening. And we're just gonna let this paste cook out for a couple minutes. Like I said, if, you, if you're burning a little bit, you're getting a little too high, and I kind of was, so I just put a little bit of water there, and you can see right now how it's completely not burning, because what that'll do is it'll just drop the temperature very quickly. So, you know, sometimes you're working with like, maybe a little too high heat, and especially if you're cooking on an electric stove, which are just horrible. They just truly are horrible. I don't know what else to say. I mean, that's what I have over here. We're gonna have the studio soon, and that also has an electric stove, and. You, the technique you could do with that if you're ever burning is you do not try to lower your heat. It will, it'll, you know, it, your, your thing will be toast before, before it lowers. You move the pan to another burner, to an to a unheated burner, and you put some liquid down there. All right, so we're good right now. That cooked for a few minutes. I'm gonna put in 12 ounces of Guinness beer. It wouldn't be shepherd's pie without Guinness beer. Oh, and I said, what did I, I used Guinness in something recently, Tara. What was it that I it used It was the in? chili. Oh, the chili. And I said mistakenly, I said it's not a beer, it's a stout. You know how many people told me about that? They were shocked that all your producers and editors um, missed it in post-production. All right, guys, so let's turn this heat up to high. What were you saying? I don't think people realize that, you know, it's just you and I. Oh, I think they do. <laughs> I think, I, I mean, I think some people realize. I think some people don't. Yeah, this is actually our our house. Our house with the the good bones this kitchen has. The timer for the potatoes just went off. I just checked them a minute ago. They're rock hard. So use a knife. Once the knife can go all the way through it, pretty much like without any resistance, they're done. And then you can drain your potatoes and then we'll make the mashed potatoes. The timing works out basically how long that takes to how long it's gonna take to make your uh, delicious lamb stuffing. Oh, so good. So I want this liquid from the Guinness to basically reduce completely. It's gonna take about four minutes on high for that to happen. It's almost there, but not quite yet. You can, I don't know if I told you, have, you better off having a, a spoon with a flat edge like this, because then you can scrape the bottom of the pan to remove all of the brown bits. All of our liquid has pretty much reduced. So what I'm gonna do now is turn this heat down to medium, maybe even a touch lower, about a four out of 10. Right here, I have a quarter cup of flour, so we're gonna cook this out for about just one, two minutes, just to get rid of any white flour. All right, guys, we're gonna put everything else in here now. This is two cups of low-sodium beef stock. And you can see, like, I had this sitting for a while. Look at all that stuff stuck to the bottom there. That's all the flavor, so I gotta get it out of it. And now we pour it out of there. You could also use beef base here. I use beef base in almost every recipe, normally when I'm saying like beef stock or whatever, uh, or chicken stock, I'm using beef base or chicken base. Put the peas in, I'm gonna put all our herbs, which is one tablespoon of thyme and one tablespoon of rosemary. And then we're gonna put Worcester sauce. Well, we're gonna put a quarter cup of that in here, which is four tablespoons. This is liquid gold, this stuff. I absolutely love it. We're gonna bring this to a boil and we wanna reduce the liquid by half. Whenever you're making dishes that reduce, like everything reduces, say you're doing like a braise, starting with like six cups of liquid and it's gonna go down to two after three hours of oven cooking, you always wanna be careful with the amount of sodium you're putting in there because whatever you start off in the beginning is gonna be so potent at the end. So right here, this is gonna reduce by half. So even that low sodium beef stock I put in there might and the Worcestershire might be enough sodium in here. We'll see. As it's boiling, you can just, if you have anything stuck to the bottom here, just remove it more with your wooden spoon. And then 
lower the heat down to about a four out of 10, maybe a three out of 10, just to simmer. Let's just simmer this down for about 10 or 15 minutes until most of the liquid reduces. It only took about five minutes to do this, but just do it based on eyeballing it, not on time. Always trust your eyes over the time or anything a recipe calls for, but you see the thickness here like this. This is kind of how you want it. You don't want it to be very thin. All right, this is good. You could turn this off. Let's taste this. We gotta make sure that it tastes perfect because this is our chance. We don't have another chance. Once we put our potatoes on top of it and lock it in, I'm happy with it. You should be happy with your cooking too. When you do a really good job, tell your wife, tell your husband, tell your kids. Most parents are not cooking for their kids. They're taking their kids to Chick-fil-A every night. We do do Chick-fil-A every night. We just ate while. Chipotle last night. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> it was good. It's good when you get, when it's fresh. If it sits there for like a half an hour waiting for it to pick up, then it's, so this is just a ricer. This is like probably the best way to make mashed potatoes. It's simple, you know, just as long as they're soft enough, you can push them through there, squeeze them through. You could also use a mixer if you want. Hot right now. and it will rice them. And a little hard, I should have let them go a little bit longer, but we'll be all right, I can handle it. All right, and here's our riced potatoes. So right here I have one stick of melted butter, and then I have three quarter cup of heavy cream. We're gonna put obviously a lot of salt in here too. Just kind of get it all in there. And cheese, I'm gonna, I have one and a quarter cups of the Parmesan cheese. I'm gonna leave about a quarter cup left the top. I'll start with a good amount of salt here, probably about one and a half teaspoons. We will build it up from here. You could also add pepper if you want to your mashed potatoes. Mmm, those are delicious. The, the, the cheese really brings it out. When you're happy with how you have it here, then you put the egg in. Now I use Parmesan cheese. If you uh, like cheddar, that would be great too. I think we're gonna do a set. We're gonna do two little plates here. I think one of them, I'm gonna put cheddar on top of it. So the meat has, you know, really, the sauce has really come together, which is what we want. And we're just gonna lay down a hefty layer in uh, both of these dishes here. But I think those are both, I think that's fairly good there. All right, and we'll put some uh, mashed potatoes on top. You could really do this any way you want, guys. Um, you know. You could pipe it, make it really fancy. You can use an ice cream scooper. You wanna get it like kind of all over the place so it seals it in, so it's not in a situation where it's going to um, you know, bubble through. But you know, if it does, it does, whatever. Make sure you take a pan because if it does overflow, you don't want it to go on the bottom of your oven. So these aren't filled up too high, they should be all right. You can like agitate the top of the potatoes a little bit. So like you can like kind of like go like this just to get a little texture in it. You know, if you have more potatoes and you did more of like ice cream scoops, then you can like really make a better design. Or, you know, if you use a piping bag, then you can use any type of uh, attachment that it has. Well, that looks pretty good. Through this side. Do you mean a piping tip? Piping tip, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't figure, I couldn't remember what, what, what I, what I meant. All right, guys. So I have a quarter cup of the Parmesan cheese. We will put it on this one. Okay, and then I have the cheddar cheese, and I will put it on the other one. Now, a lot of times people don't like to do this because then, you know, like, you'll get like kind of like a cheese top, like which maybe you don't can't like break through it as easily. So I'll leave a little bit of area exposed. So we'll just do like that much. Is that all right, Tara, you think? Yeah. Good, that's I a mean, good. I mean, like the real test is how it tastes. So we'll see what the taste tester says. I agree, I agree. The taste is, more, is the more important thing. I feel like if you wanted a heavier cheddar, you'd probably mix the cheddar in the mashed potatoes. All right, guys, 20 minutes uncovered like this at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, middle of the oven. The last two or three minutes, bring it up to the top, like right below your broiler one or two minutes, but watch carefully. Hi, Sammy. Hi. I really like that sweatshirt. Thank you. It's nice. <laughs> but Sammy, I have two versions here. One has cheddar, one has Parmesan cheese. Oh. They both have Parmesan cheese, but this one has cheddar too. So go Can ahead. 
one of them. Go ahead, let me know what you think. Really good. Thank you. Do you usually make it with the cheddar or the Parmesan? Uh, normally with the Parmesan cheese, and mm. I did. we wanted to change it up today, so we did the ch just cheddar on one of them too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We thought the taste tester, James, the taste tester, but mm. James uh, having a little stomach, uh, little stomach ache, so we don't think shepherd's pie is a good idea for him right now, you know. They're both really good. I like this one more though. You do, the Parmesan, huh? yeah. Yeah, well this has Parmesan cheese, but this has the Parmesan cheese on top. I think, yeah, I think it's better when it's on top. Yeah. What do you think about the meat and uh, the flavor of it and everything? Yeah. You're more of a fan of beef, right? Yeah, I like the, like the cottage pie, I like the beef one more, but yeah. I still really like this one and I think it has a good flavor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, So you want to do a rating? Yeah. Okay, well, I got a new board. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Mm. Don't let me see, Sammy. Okay. Show, show the camera. <laughs> All right, no, you're, she's tough, I know. There's not, if, if you, you should be my rating person from now on, yeah. and then, because there will not be any tens, I don't think. I think I'm a little more accurate. You're ratings. a little bit more accurate. All right, so discuss why it's a nine, why it's not a 10, what, or how, why it's not a six. So like, shepherd's pie isn't, I guess my favorite thing in the world, but it's still like super good. So that's why I gave it a nine. And then I think the one with the Parmesan on top is better. And then the cheddar one, like it's like good, yeah. but like, you know, I'm not a big fan of shepherd's pie. So that's why I gave it an eight. If I made cottage pie, would I, would I have gotten a higher score? Yeah, I probably would have gotten a 10. Because you don't like lamb as much. Yeah, like I'm not like, I don't hate it. Yeah. It's just, I'm not the biggest fan of it. Where's the soda bread though? Where's the soda bread? Yeah. Soda bread is, Coming up, uh, it's on the site, uh, and it's not gonna be a video for it, but I recommend you make a, a loaf or four of soda bread because it's so good. Yeah.